Hiya. Uh, yes, my name is Pam Crony. I am a senior lecturer at Newcastle Business School at Northumbria, and I'm also look after, from the academic perspective, the admissions and recruitment for the business school. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for inviting me here today. Um, I hope I won't disappoint. Um, the objectives of my session, as I see them, and please, at the end, you may wish to you know, ask me some further questions, are to disseminate preliminary results of ongoing research that I'm currently conducting into first-year undergraduate business students' expectations of the relationship they may have with their lecturers whilst at university. Um, and to perhaps discuss the extent to which there may be a disconnect between what they expect and what they get, and perhaps the implications of that. Yeah, before I talk about my research, though, I'd like to explain a little bit about the motivations for this research, how it came about, if you like. Um, because my existing relationship, um, both personal and professional, has had implications for the design of this inquiry and also on the analysis of the findings. I am an ex-high school teacher. Um, I worked in business education with young children from the age of 14 to 18 for 23 years. I normally get a round of applause for that. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um, and during that time, actually, um, obviously I saw an awful lot of changes occurring. Now, I saw the introduction of modular GCSEs, the introduction of modular A-levels. I saw GMVQs being introduced and then GMVQs being withdrawn. I, school, I saw schools trying to get on to delivering BTECs and so on. And I experienced firsthand, if you like, how teaching and learning during those years really changed. Um, there did become in my opinion, an, an ever-increasing emphasis on results and to the perception by many, therefore, that teaching at level three was very much assessment-driven as opposed to learning-driven. Uh, school children became spoon-fed, some might say. And all in all, this, this, this emphasis, if you like, this... Uh, pressure on us to improve academic grades has perhaps led to an increase in educational assistance to students, which I think may have led to unrealistic expectations of students of their university teachers once they come to university. And that's been backed up in the literature. Um, in addition to being a high school teacher for 23 years, um, for the last five years of those, I actually worked part-time within the university. Um, I was their school's liaison coordinator, and I was a module tutor for a level four program. Um, and during that time, I myself began to develop expectations of students, which were perhaps different than the expectations that I had of students at high school. And at the same time, I began to see how my role as a university teacher was different to that of a high school teacher. Um, and it's really that sort of background which has made me want to do this research. Um, and I think, if I'm honest, um, it, it gives it a different slant. And I feel in a very unique and privileged position in which to undertake this research. Uh, the second motivation is more to do with the changes which have occurred within HE and FE over the last few years, uh, and especially since the introduction of tuition fees within the UK. Certainly from a university-wide perspective, the notion of what a student is and their perceived role has been given much more prominence since the introduction of tuition fees. Now, we have heard students referred to as consumers and customers. Yeah, um, and as a consequence of these type of names attached to students, perhaps the roles and responsibilities of students and lecturers has come up more as a discussion. 
um, in the literature that I've been reading. Now, it's not just consumers and customers that students are getting referred to now. There's a whole list here. Uh, Co-producers, learners are still there, employees, partners, clients, and apprentices, apprentices, to name but a few. Yeah. And I think once we start to attach a name to a thing, perhaps their role needs looking at. And that's another reason why I decided to undertake this research. And the third motivation for this research is it's actually part of my DBA. <laughs> and I have to do it. No, I don't. Um, but I'm, I'm basically doing a DBA on expectations and I'm hoping to make a contribution to both theory and practice. And obviously, any of my findings will go uh, towards Newcastle Business School in hoping, in trying to make that transition for students a lot more um, clearer and better for them. So that's the motivations for my research, and that's how the research has come about. If we move on to an overview of my research, today I'm only actually going to talk to you about this aspect of the research that I've done so far, which is the quantitative research. Um, my research is basically a, a pragmatic approach. Um, it's going to involve mixed methods to a certain extent, the quantitative and the qualitative data collection. It is very important for me to get the response of both students and staff towards its expectations um, because my thoughts are that social relationships do exist between students and lecturers through this pedagogic relationship and these involve reciprocal exchanges. So therefore there is a need to establish what expectations exist and how important they are with a view to then seeing whether there is any odds between them. So it's with this in mind that I am undertaking, or I have undertaken, undertook even, um, some quantitative data collection, um, which I'll talk to you a little bit today about. Since I've done that quantitative data collection, I've also been involved in um, some semi-structured interviews with students um, over the year. I've done three interviews with students on three consecutive times with uh, nine students, um, which feeds on from my quantitative data research. Um, and next term, I am interviewing some level four teachers, university teachers, finding out about their expectations a little bit more. So that's the bigger picture, if you like, of my research. Um, and as I said to you today, I'm only going to be looking at the quantitative data collection. busy. <laughs> uh, then this is the main thrux of my, my presentation today. So on to my research and my results. Um, how did I get to this chart and what is it telling us? Um, I do have these charts on a handout if anyone really would like a look at them in more detail later on. In the same way I've also got um, an extended abstract that I wrote for this session that I brought with me if you would like to, to look at it later. Um, Last August, um, I sent out a questionnaire uh, to students who had accepted a place at Newcastle Business School on one of our business-related courses and who had achieved the grades. Uh, they got their A-level results something like on the Thursday and the survey was sent to them the following week. Um, 59 students completed that survey. It was only sent to students who applied from the northeast. Obviously, we have something like six, seven hundred students on our first year programmes, but I only wanted to use as a sample the students from the northeast. Um, that's because at a later stage, I'm going to go into schools in the northeast to talk to high school teachers to see how they prepare their students. Um, so I just um, asked for northeastern students to complete the survey. Um, at the same time as that survey went out, I produced an adapted one for members of staff, those university teachers who were involved in the teaching and learning of level four students. And 39 um, colleagues within the university completed that um, survey for me. 
Now, in addition to the usual personal data on the student questionnaire, uh, I also asked students about what school type they went to, the types of subjects they'd taken, and also what their source of, where their source of expectations had come from. The purpose of these questions was to try to see if any of their expectations were dependent on school type or choice of qualification. So if they'd gone to a private school, for example, did this have an impact on their expectations and what they perceived as important to them? Yeah, if they'd done BTEC, did that have an impact and so on? Um, Subsequent chi-square analysis has revealed that expectations of their tutors is independent of school type and qualifications. So it doesn't matter what type of school they had been to. It doesn't impact on what they expect or what they see as important. Yeah. What was quite interesting was students were asked um, to also identify what they expected of their own role. And that was dependent on the type of qualification they had taken. So if they'd done A-levels, for example, then perhaps they had different expectations of themselves than perhaps students who had done a BTEC and so on. Um, there was no statistical evidence to suggest that expectations of their tutors was in any way attached to their gender. Now, arguably, one of the most important questions on the survey in respect to my research were the ones that asked students about their degree of agreement with a series of expectational qualities or attributes of their lecturers and the importance that they attached to them. So students were asked, I expect my tutors to, and it's these blue things, yeah, I expect my tutors to be fair. And then they had a Likert scale, which was all of the time, most of the time, some of the time, or never. Yeah? Those series of questions, I expect my tutors to, were then followed up with the question, it is important that my tutors are fair, very important, important, not important, not at all important. Yeah? So those two questions followed each other. What do they expect? How important is it to them? Uh, the data was then collected and exploratory statistical analysis did show that there was a strong statistical relationship between the constructs. So in other words, factors that have a high level of expectation associated with them also had a high level of importance and vice versa. Apologies. Um, a positive correlation of 0.88 was achieved from the students on that. Tutors, university teachers, had been asked a similar question on their questionnaire. Their question had been something like, what did they expect the typical first-year student to expect from their tutor? Fair, honest, and so on. And then to attribute some level of importance to it. And this is the data that you see here. Yeah, the data from both the tutors and the students were then plotted onto basically a scatter graph. Yeah. Now, although the, the figure is a scatter graph, um, I've divided it up into four quadrants, rather like a Boston matrix. Yeah? So in this bottom box here, we've got those constructs which students and lecturers thought were expected of, of lecturers and also important to them. Yeah, up here, we've got things which are important, to, um, which are expectations, but aren't seen as that important. Uh, this quadrant here, low expectations. I don't really expect my lecturers to do that, and it's not that important to me. And up here, you've got those which are um, of low importance and of low expectations. Is it really difficult to see at the back? No, it's not good. I was going to say, I've got some sheets I could pass up. Uh, I do apologise for that. Yeah. Um, so we plotted those constructs. Yeah. Now, each of the constructs in the scatter diagram obviously has two points. The blue one represents the student point, and the red one represents the teacher's point. Yeah. And by doing that, 
it was therefore, I was then able to see the distance, if you like, between some of these constructs. And therefore, was there any similar similarities and differences? Now, I'll put two up there. We've got punctual and doctoral qualification. All right, so basically what that's telling us, it can be seen from the doctoral qualifications that they're close. Students' and teachers' perceptions of students' expectations don't expect their university teachers to have a doctoral qualification, and they don't see it as important. I bet in mind they are coming into us fresh. Uh, but punctual, yeah? University teachers perceive that students expect them to be punctual and think it's relatively important, whereas students don't really expect their lecturers to be punctual and don't really see it as that important. Um, so we could all be late. Um, now, obviously, the problem with this type of analysis is that it is tempting to concentrate only on those things where you've got a bigger difference. So somewhere like punctual there, there is a distance. We can see it on the diagram. Um, but probably that's not the most contentious area when we're looking at it. But if we look at quadrant one down here, um, we can see that for students, three of their important constructs, if you like, or expectations, um, do have some distance with that of their university teachers. Um, and those are approachable, yeah? So for students, they expect, and it's important, that their members of staff are approachable. And yet, yeah, no, university teachers do perceive that, but they perhaps don't perceive it as much. The other one is to do with motivational, um, and the other one is fair. Right. Uh, and in a way, this, this analysis has then led me into my semi-structured interviews uh, because these constructs and discussion about these constructs have been followed up in my semi-structured interviews to find out a little bit more about these expectations and the importance of them. Now, this was expectations of lecturers. Yeah? I also asked the question, which we see on this graph, um, about what students expected of their role and what they thought was important. Uh, so students were asked how true the following statements were for them. You know, I expect to have to attend. Very true, or oh, sorry, yes, very true, not true, possibly true, don't know. Um, and again, following that set of questions, it was a question of whether it was important for them. Yeah? So they asked the questions, was it important for them to attend, and so on. And the, the criteria for that, was, again, was very important, important, not that important, and not important at all. Yeah? Again, tutors were asked a similar questions to get their response. And again, each of the constructs have been put into the scatter diagram. Uh, one is representing the students, again, the blue, and one is representing the teachers, again, there, which is the red. And again, we can see some distances. Um, if we look at attend there, um, it's very, very close. In fact, it's in total agreement. Yeah? Students expect, as part of their role, they should attend, and they see that as important so do the university teachers. Yeah. Um, however, there is a distance between electronic materials available. If I was going to do this again, I, I probably wouldn't have put that one in, because um, I'm not quite sure where I'm leading with it. But it, it, it basically shows there that students, or lecturers, think that students want and expect these electronic materials available to them, and that's important to them whereas students don't actually see that as an They don't expect those ex electronic materials to be available or being that important to them. Again, you know, it's a scatter diagram. We're perhaps putting too much importance to those things where we can see a distance because that's where perhaps we might see a contentious area. Um, 
But I think what's important or what's interesting about this particular uh, set of questions that I asked was the fact that students perhaps had less expectations of their role and didn't see many things as being important in their role uh, than their lecturers. Yeah, if we look down here in, in this quadrant at the bottom here, um, students only expect to have to attend and take responsibility as, as being important. Yeah? Um, whereas perhaps lecturers or university teachers perceive that they will expect to have more expectations of their roles. The other interesting one was the, the take responsibility. Um, st students expect to have to take responsibility and see that as quite important. <laughs> Whereas what university teachers were telling us is that they perceived that students didn't expect to have to take responsibility and that that wasn't important to them. So there was a little bit of distance between them there. Study independently, again, was perhaps something that students don't expect as part of their role to have to study independently, and it's not that important. And that's how university teachers also perceive that students think of their role. So, interim conclusions. Um, it's my belief that formal contracts don't make successful and fulfilling relationships and that people do. And therefore, in that respect, it is important to know what we expect from these relationships and how important it is to have these expectations met. Um, so it's important for staff to know what students expect and how important it is to them and vice versa. Because by doing this, we will get a better relationship with our students and they will have a better relationship with their university teachers. Um, what the initial survey showed me um, was that students' expectations of lecturers broadly concur with those anticipated by staff. Yeah? So items rated as important by both included the need for university teachers to be approachable, fair, honest, have good communication skills, good subject knowledge and be able to explain things. Yeah. Um, when we looked a little bit more detail, we saw there was some distance between the perception of university teachers and the perception of students, in particular staff being approachable, fair and motivational. With regards to students' role, uh, the, contracts, the contrast, perhaps, was greater. Um, in particular, students have fewer expectations of themselves and attach less importance to them compared to their university teachers. Um, for example, students only see it as important for them to attend and to take some responsibility for their own learning, whereas university teachers anticipated that they thought that students would see their role as one to be working much harder and to be honest. There was also that distance, if you like, with regards to take responsibility for one's own learning, um, which lecturers saw as being as important and students didn't see to be as much most as important, beg your pardon. This was the initial study that I conducted in terms of the, the quantitative data. This has now gone into my qualitative research, um, where I am now, or I have, conducted semi-structured interviews with students and university teachers. And what I've done is I've taken the quantitative information and I've built on that to ask students again more about their expectations and how they feel when those expectations are not being met. I did a set of interviews in October with the students. Um, I did a set of interviews in February with the students and I did a set of interviews with the same students again in the end of May. I've just finished those um, students. So I've done a, a little 
longitudinal study with them over the year, um, finding out about their expectations and finding out more about their expectations, beg your pardon, and finding out more about what it feels when those expectations aren't met. Um, it, that's very interesting. And that's built on the information. It's supported some of the information. It's refuted some of the information, actually, that I found out previously. Um, one of the, the interesting things in the last set of interviews that I did with the students was I was asking them about who they felt had the bigger obligation to fulfil their role within the relationship. And um, all students said it was the student's responsibility um, which, if you like, it, it, it was something which went against the fact that they didn't feel that they needed to take as much responsibility for their learning. Um, their expectations over those three interviews as well did change quite tremendously, um, leading to perhaps as it learned expectations and so on. Um, the next step after analysing the interviews with the students will be to interview the uh, university teachers um, I'm going to interview all module tutors of level four programmes to find out about their expectations of students and their expectations of themselves and how they feel when those expectations aren't met. Uh, those are the references if anyone wishes to take up anything for on that. And that's me. Um, and please feel free to contact me. And have we got any questions? Would you mind going back a couple of slides to one of the, the, the second of the two scattergrams? That one. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility. That's the students saying that they expect to take responsibility and it's important. Yes. To them. And the teacher's one says that the students are not taking responsibility or that they don't expect them to. They don't expect them to have to take responsibility. Did you ask? <laughs> Pardon? 39? Uh, they, 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 were, they were saying what they thought students expected. Their perceptions. Their, so they, they, no, it wasn't, I won't take students to take, it's what do you think students? Right, but, but the reality is actually something, something different, isn't it? So there's, there's a question about the, the response and the, the intent response, the yes. actual action. Yes. Because I can see that with the attendance one. You know, the actual intention, well, it's important to attend, is clearly important. But the actual action taken by students is something different from that which they say. Yes, but 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 we asked, you know, why did that? They had that expectation at the beginning that they had to attend, and that they saw that as a very strong expectation of their role, and it was important to them to attend. They felt it was very important to attend. Subsequent interviews of 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 challenge, you know, attendance doesn't necessarily happen. Why aren't you attending as much? If if you see that as part of your, if your role, um, and as, as being important. And, and, and what's quite interesting is, is they, the students are seeing it as a bit of a deal. Um, if they're not getting other things, their other expectations aren't being met, then they're not going to attend. Sorry, I didn't explain that. No, this question was, the question was saying to university teachers, what do you think about the students? What do you think the students think? Yeah, is, is yeah. The real question, if you like, and it's related to Jess's presentation, is if students and teachers both put things in the top right-hand quadrant, like study independently, yeah. why the hell aren't they down in the bottom left-hand quadrant? And what, what ought we to be doing, as a university, I have to say, to move people down to the left? Both yes. Both. Yeah, I mean, I had a related question, which you kind of think is, is kind of question is, who's influencing who to make these two up here, you know, is it that, that staff think they're not going to study independently anyway and therefore yeah, why, bother? why bother, or is it the fact that, you know, the students are arriving kind of uh, without independent study and, and therefore that, that they're sh shaping the, the staff point of view or the other way around, yeah. Yeah, and I can't really answer that because I haven't really talked to the staff sufficiently well, I'm, yet. I've got an answer for you, you pitch them into Jess's Psychology 101, right? <laughs> No, but, but, but it's a very good point. What, what's been interesting, if I just take, and I haven't analysed my qualitative uh, interviews properly yet, um, but it is interesting 
for the stu when the students are saying, but we expected this from our lecturers or university teachers, I'm calling them that because they differentiate between lecturers and seminar tutors, um, and they didn't deliver on that, and I'm not going to deliver on what I think. But that, that, it, that's what seems, for some of them, that seems to be the issue. Don't you think the, uh, and then, sorry, okay. yeah. the attendance and the independent study, don't you think that that, that expectation is, uh, you know, I don't have to study independently because if I attend, you'll tell me everything I need to know. <laughs> this was the main, <laughs> this was the thrust of, of Jesse's talk that you yeah. didn't, didn't um, catch. So, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> But they don't attend. <laughs> That's the problem. No, they expect to have to attend, um, and they don't study independently. And they still pass and do well. Well, that's the next stage, actually, when I look at their results this next year. I'm just playing with this. Kind of, um, we mess up time. I'm interested in this electronic materials thing. Um, where? <coughs> that's the staff saying the students need electronic No, materials. that's the staff. Like, thinking, thinking the students want it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of our biggest moans from the yeah. students is that. Yeah, but actually, when you ask the students, they're not that bothered. When they first, before they'd come here, before so, they'd come here, this was all done be, without any hindsight bias. They they were coming. They hadn't even been into the university apart from an open day. What the, what the students are clear about is approachable, fair staff yes. who can explain the subjects honestly. Yes. They're clear about that stuff. Yeah. How much money are we investing in the likes of Vital and Blackboard? They're not used at Newcastle there. Blackboard, yeah. Lots. How much in terms of staff? I don't know. Because that, 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 that might be worth looking at. That's, that's just, that does stand out, doesn't it? Yeah. To be honest, to be honest, it was it, Absolutely, when I designed my questionnaire, I don't think I should have put that in because that's, no, 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 this was no, meant to be no. about the role, though, of, of them. I don't see that their role. I think it's worth, worth pointing out that in, in our internal student survey, uh, of thousands of students, electronic resources and electronic materials come out with being absolutely essential yeah. when students have been here for a reasonable period of time. Is that I, and yeah, but I, but but just no, I don't have to uh, uh, to support <laughs> as a school teacher to support your point of view. The interviews, this last set of interviews that I've done in June, we have talked about, um, you know, do you expect, ha, ha, how other things have happened in the university, what they've expected. And they do expect things to be available to them, but they expect them to be available to them because some students have become unhappy with their lectures because their lectures, they say, are just the lecture slides. They're not learning anything else. So if they've got the material available, I won't bother attending and I'll just go. Um, so there's, there's, there's lots to dig down, I think, into that. Yeah. Julia, you have a question? Yeah, I, I was wondering about your response, Frank, because in general, the students' responses are quite pleasing. Isn't. Mm -hmm. Are, yeah, I isn't. would say, in general. But I'm wondering whether or not the more engaged students have responded to your survey. And so whether or not that sanded out under our feet for 30% who are disengaged and what haven't responded. Can I, can I say, what, what, there was in total 139 questionnaires were sent out originally and I was very naive I thought everyone will want to reply to my questionnaire because it's my questionnaire and also um, I thought they've just got your A-level results or your B-tech results you're going to want to you come into Northumbria you'll want to reply so there was only 59 who replied from that questionnaire I did ask whether they'd be prepared to to then be part of the semi-structured interviews and there was only nine students who agreed to that, even at that stage. I think you might need to check your response bias by going back and looking at the <laughs> rates of engagement. Because if you find that you're the non-responders have got a lower rate of engagement, you might not have captured the people who we think are coming right. in without the right expectations. Yeah. So you might want to check your response bias. Mm -hmm. Sorry, search question. No, that's very good. Thank I'm here to learn. I need to write that down, actually. Can I go get my pen? Pause for uh, to be told how to do it, right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> no, it's fine, thank you. So I'm just going to say that it's probably linked to Jess's presentation as well, but perhaps the students don't understand their role-related behaviour before they come, so they don't have an awareness of what... So it's a bit down to psychology and the role of the student. I don't think they do. Do they understand that? I, I'm not convinced they do, and that's why we asked the question before they came, yeah. and that's why we're going to work with schools, hopefully.
that's that's where I started because I mean uh, the, the agenda is that the vice chancellor thinks that we should be looking at retention and seriously improving that. Ruth said to me, have you got retention in that teaching and learning conference? I said, no, Ruth, I haven't. Um, so then I went away and thought about it and spoke to a few people and, and, and that, because, but it's about that, that, you know, kind of what do they expect when they come here and, and how do they know what they're going to get and, and how they respond appropriately. It's looking at the impact, if you like, of those expectations, whether they'll keep to retain. Um, I, was, I was particularly interested in what you said at the start about the idea for your research having, coming, having come from your particular perspective as a, a secondary teacher moving into a university, seeing, having that overview of the great difference that's available in the amount of support to individual students in schools driven by the, uh, tri driven by the, the need to show higher assessment results mm -hmm. and what they need at university. Uh, I lead a compulsory level one, uh, level four unit for students when they first arrive. So I've noticed, in particular this year, that some students seem to have expectations of their unit tutor uh, that are disappointed, and some of them are quite aggressively and volubly disappointed in their expectations. Uh, it's my impression that a lot of that disappointment is coming from the the fact that they expect the person who stands up in front of them in the seminar room to deliver everything, including the academic support, the extra work, counselling and so on, rather than this coming from more specialist people, as happens mm -hmm. in the university. And I wondered, you know, from your point of view of what happens in schools, uh, is that, do you think that that's a reasonable um, observation on my behalf? My, yes, I, do. I think... At school, um, from talking to the students, because one of the questions I asked them in their semi-structured interviews was, um, d what's the difference, what the difference did you expect from your school teachers to your university teacher? And a school teacher delivers the package. Um, a school teacher is there to sit and talk to you about how to do your break-even analysis, how to do income statements and so on. But at the same time, if you're a little bit cheesed off, they'll have a chat to you about that. And at the same time, if you're having trouble I hate to say I, I produced writing frames for my A-level students up till last year, um, and, and I would support them in their writing, how to write. So they expect you to deliver the package. And they also expect that of their English teacher, and, and every teacher has to be able to multitask. And I think you're right, I think when they come to university, from the academic, they're also expecting a wee bit more of that, what they call pastoral support, um, which isn't our role. Thank you. That's really in useful for me to know, and that kind of validates what I think I've observed. Thank you. But that's personal. Perspective. Okay, the last question, I think, is Rod. It's a really quick comment. Is it the great book that was produced by Harry Torrance at the Institute of Education that looked at um, students in um, A level and FE colleges' experience of assessment uh, compared to what they get when they come to university? And one of the biggest differences that Harry found was that those students' previous experiences, one of iterative development of particular assessment tasks with their tutor until they get to a point where either the student thinks it's good enough for a final mark or the tutor thinks it's good enough for a final mark. Whereas when they come here, they do a piece of work, they hand it in, we mark it, and then they get their feedback. And that was a source of really big dissatisfaction. And actually, that's become that's in my latter interviews, feedback and assessment was much more was talked about in terms of their expectations. And, and again, it's because they don't know really what they're going to get. And very few students do any research into how teaching might go on at a university. When I said to them in their interviews, "Did any of you think about how you would be taught at university?" None of them had actually thought about that, even though they'd come to open days.